Just I accept them in whatever form they are. Just, yo, just, yo. That hole over there. The hole over there. All right. I am now mm. accepting applications for thoughts. <laughs> Not thoughts, because we don't care about those. Thoughts. Yes. Thoughts with no thoughts. Thoughts. <laughs> that, the, the best kind. That sounds like a fucking, um, oh, what you call that, nonprofit organization. <laughs> Thoughts without thoughts. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. That's good. I like that one. That's good. That's good. Right. Yo, Boys uh, for thoughts. I, I am recording yeah. with you dudes tonight from from the, the band practice space because my air conditioner broke in my house and they can't fix it till tomorrow and it's like 95 degrees in my house right now. Jesus. Oh. Bro, sweat it out. Yeah. <laughs> sweat no, sweat it out. <laughs> Record there. Sweat it out. Bro. I, I just no the fuck that I'd be like no nah, I'm good fuck this shit <laughs> yeah it's it's like really bad down here it's fucking super hot man like fucking uh, is global warming real um it, it might be it, it fucking might be I think it could it, be it could be it could be I think it could be because uh it's fucking hot it used to snow mm-hmm. where down here where I'm at and now it's like there's like no snow is not even it does not reference it's it's not a thing down here anymore so, no no. Uh, 95 is too fucking hot. I wouldn't be able to fucking live under those conditions. Yeah. Yeah. We got like a, we threw like a window unit in the bedroom, which is where like mm. the animals and like Kristen have been hanging out. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to the, to the practice space to do this. Cause it's also mm. where the magic happens. Oh yeah. You know, you know, yeah. You know, when was the last time someone here was like banged on a couch or something? In a long fucking time. Jesus yeah, Christ. Like, I can't even the, the, remember the, the last time. The bed is like prime prime real estate, right? Yeah, for real. You got all your angles, you know, there's maximum mobility. Right. Um, yeah, you can sit on the edge. There's all kinds of shit you can do. Yeah. I don't, you know what's the worst thing is like doing it in a car. That That is... It's, Put it in the car sucks, but in, in all honesty, do it in the shower is even worse. I oh, can't do shower sex anymore. It's fucking terrible. Feels like a glove. Feels like you're fucking in a <laughs> yeah. It's not good. It sucks. Like, it's cool that you're, like, naked and soaping each other up, but it fucking blows. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah, doing it in a car is worse, though, because then you're huffing, like, the, the Badissi smell right in your face. <laughs> and it's and it's, tra- yeah. it's trapped in there, so there's, like, there's, <laughs> there's no way, like, especially if whoever you're hooking up with is, yeah. is got a rank, it smells yeah. like a fucking fish market. You're fucked. Mm-hmm. Are we yeah. recording right now? We are totally recording. All right, then I'll oh. tell you the story later. Never mind. I'm, I'm not going down the road right now. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, well, let's let's get started. We'll do the introductions. We're fucking back. It's great to hear from all of you. But I got to do the introductions for all these fine gentlemen. He believes the fastest way back home is running on cocaine. Mr. Rob Fortune. Rob, how are you? I'm great. That was very appropriate. Thank you, Jomo. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh... You know, got a new computer, doing some great things. Video Ooh. gaming is at prime now. Now I have to do yard work, so there's that. This man is quoted by saying, I am disappeared. I go to army. Mr. Jeff, how are you? That's right. I am disappeared from my hot-ass house into the basement to be hanging out with you dudes, so I'm here. <laughs> no how one, are you? Did anyone get that reference? It, it's a Frank Turner slash Arrested Development reference. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> no, okay. no. We all got the first one. Yeah, yeah. You, hey, all right. Uh, woo, way over the head. All right. His goal is to take you home, but it's only the, by the Cosby method. Mr. Jack Falcon. Jack, how are you? That was okay. Uh, I'm out of, I'm out of cans. I'm out of cans. All I got is a bottle. Guess that what that was? was, was uh, it was okay. There's no worse. I'm going to say Schlitz. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Corona. It's Dude, a, out of all beers, Corona straight, it makes your breath smell like ass. It smells like, a like kid, I'm smelling it right box. now, and it smells terrible. It, it, and everyone's always like, "Oh yeah, you got to put a lime in it." Like, why? Why wouldn't they just make it with a lime? <laughs> it is the original coronavirus, dude. No, oh, yeah, exactly. Whoa. I like that. All right, so I don't got to fuck. Anyway, it's basically like shit. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I don't got to fuck Mary Kill today though. But I got okay. a, a new thing I'm going to try out with you guys. It's called two questions. First question is: Are vegetarians people or dinosaurs? No. <laughs> Uh, so I, 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 I'm biased because I was vegetarian for six years, so I'm going to oh, say shit. dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a sellout vegetarian too, so I'm gonna go with dinosaurs. So they don't you, exist either. So you both were vegetarians, and then you got out of the the lifestyle. No, oh, Jeff is still a vegetarian. No, no, I I tip toe the line real hard. Like, I'm I'm a sellout. It's fine. You, you just see like dinosaur chicken nuggets, and you're like, that's kind of vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, you're eating meat, right, Jeff? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I I've been dabbling. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dude, all right. I went vegetarian on a bet. All right, no oh. joke. Like 2009, my friend's long ex girlfriend bet me that I couldn't go vegetarian, and I've been and I, and I did it for like ten plus years. So I didn't even do it for any reasons besides I wanted to beat this girl. So. Wow! I have no, no reason. Yeah, exactly. That's commitment. Yeah. So That's a fucking commitment. So similar for me. Uh, there was a guy on my bus that I fucking hated, and he's like, "You don't, you think you're better than me? You eat meat." And he like, and I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm vegetarian." And that was the moment that I became vegetarian. <laughs> I did it for six years. Fucking. You had to live, so you're yeah. You had to live the lie, right? You're saying you lied first and then lived it. What if? This dude's ex girlfriend and that kid in your bus were like related and they ruined both of our lives. <laughs> Married Jesus right now. Christ. And they're miserable together. <laughs> yes. The, that that's a that's these are levels of dedication that I cannot aspire or have the willpower yeah. to do. I, I you guys mm. are better than me. The but... only thing I've done on a more consistent basis in my life is jerk off, and I've still missed a couple days. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. All right, yeah, they're they're definitely not people. They're dinosaurs. All right, so second question: Who has better slang, Americans or English people? Go. Uh, English people. Why? I, every time I listen to, it, I don't know. It's like the shit that they say. First of all, like you have to know what it is. Half the time I, when they talk, I have no clue what the fuck they're talking about. But also, the English accent is hilarious. Uh, if you ever l listen to Jim Sterling, Jim has recently on um, like a transition thing. So, but anyway, before. Uh, Jim would play this song of uh, this game called uh, what was it called? What's under the covers where you have to try to. So like you're in bed in your bedroom and you have to try to jerk off. But like people keep opening the door, like your mom comes in, or your grandma comes in. So you have to stop jerking off when someone opens the door. So then like, mm -hmm. they shut the door and you keep going. You got to like build up this meter or whatever. Mm -hmm. And as like Jim was playing this, everything he said was fucking hilarious. And most of it was just because it was in an English accent. So I'm all in. I've said for a while, the English accent is hilarious. And then like the whack fucking shit they say on top of it it just it's way better it, it's it's fucking hilarious definitely i have only one thing that makes me decide one or the other and it's the word cunt and for that reason <laughs> i gotta say england yeah cunt is amazing uh, yes I, I don't know man i uh <laughs> i listen to a lot of podcasts and some of my nerd dumb podcasts are done from the uk and i think i'm going on the other i think uh, the american makes me laugh more so okay nice. all right all right like I, I, I'm not gonna lie. English people have great slang. You know, I, I went over there um, before. It's not a bad country. Um, I don't know why they refer to themselves as the Kingdom of England, but it's you know, <laughs> they don't have a king. But uh, the slang in America is uh, bad Adam. because <laughs> the slang in America is better because we have more variety. You know, you got Southern slang, you got fucking Northern, you got the Boston slang, you got New York slang, LA. Uh, pretentious douchebag slang you got there's all sorts of slang that we have down here and um you know especially southern slang it's funny mildly racist but um i can look past that all right it's not that bad <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the boys was that what's his name just says cunt all the time mm -hmm. i was like yeah it's it's the best butcher. rob right R rob uh yeah butcher yeah yep. just says cunt all the time and i'm, I'm always like it's fucking hilarious because they use it like regularly like over here if you mm. talk somebody to cunt they're gonna like spray you in the face with pepper spray mm. uh, they fucking say cunt all the time mm. yeah jeff you were at my wedding when like my sister or, or my sister my wife's sister like opened her mouth to give like the maid of honor speech and everyone just couldn't stop laughing because of her freaking <laughs> ridiculous southern accent <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to remember how how who she was and how attractive she was. Y'all y'all remember when uh Jim Bob <laughs> ran over the uh the, the bullfrog and then we were we were frog gigging out by it. Oh god, that sounds so white. That is I live in the south. I live in the the it's true the a uh, very you southern don't live state. that far south. Bro, it's the south, all right? Virginia is no longer the south. North Carolina is for sure the south. It's it's like if Jim Bob fucked his cousin, it's definitely south for sure. I'm going to name I'm going to if I ever have a boy as a child, I'm going to name him James Roberts. So I can call him Jim Bob. What do you name in the girl? Uh don't worry about it. I'll tell you when she's born. 
Anyway, let's move on. We're covering Frank fucking Turner. Frank Turner. Uh, so all the information here in the blurbs and everything comes from Wikipedia. I'm not trying to steal anyone's information. So if it's wrong here, it's wrong there. So as of today, Frank Turner has released nine solo albums, four rarities compilation albums, one retrospective best of album, one split record, and five EPs. So he's done tons of shit. This guy has a release like every fucking year. So he's pretty busy. I'm mm. going to assume if if mm. if if Jomo doesn't hate this guy, I'm going to be shocked. Uh, so one of the CDs we're not covering <laughs> is his first, which is called Sleep is for the Week that came out in 2007. Uh, so if you're into Frank Turner and you want more, you can check that out. Let me drop this album artwork and then we'll move on to the first one we did listen to. Uh, Love, Ire, and Song is a 12-track record released in 2008, coming in just under 46 minutes long. It's Turner's second studio album, reaching number 72 on the UK Albums Chart, and contains the singles Photosynthesis, Reasons Not to Be an Idiot, I Knew Poof Rock Before He Got Famous, and Long Live the Queen. In an interview, Turner summarized the album's title as the three things you need in life to be content, love, ire, which is righteous anger, and song, as well as saying it was almost a restatement of the ideas in 2007's Sleep is for the Week, but much, much better. Love, Ire, and Song was entirely written by Turner and recorded on a farm near his hometown of Winchester. It was co-produced by Turner and Ben Lloyd, who contributed electric guitar and harmonica to the record. Turner's live drummer, Nigel Powell provided percussion and keyboard and London indie band The Holloways provided backing vocals on photosynthesis. Long Live the Queen was released as a benefit single for the breast cancer campaign in honor of a close friend who died from it. In 2009, Love, Iron Song was re-released as a 35-track double album deluxe version, including the first three years compilation album. Love, Iron Song has been certified gold. Rob, what do you think of this record? I don't think I had listened to Frank Turner before this week. I know a lot of my friends love him, and so uh, I don't know why I never checked him out until this week. But uh, I love Frank Turner now, and I'm, he's going to be on my regular playlist, I think. I'm going to be listening to him week in, week out. So I'm going to be, as, as we go over these albums, I'm going to do two reviews. You know, So first, I'm, I'm going to talk about like music, what I think of his music. And then I'm going to try to guess how much he's drinking during each of these albums. <laughs> I'm, now, I'm probably going to be fucking wrong and judgmental and an asshole, but uh, I'm going to do it anyways. Fuck it. I don't know. So, um, okay. So I like this album. It's not my favorite. So I don't know if I'm, I, let's call it my fourth favorite. I don't think that the recording quality is there yet. You, you said he like recorded it at home or something. So it sounds good for that. You know, it's like photosynthesized. I really liked and, uh, you know, so this album is him. Uh, so he starts out good and he, you know, to me, he gets like better and better with every album. You know, so I'm going to say at this point, you know, so he's drinking whiskey. He loves being outside. And, uh, you know, he sees some of the like the Fight Club stuff, you know, like the the objects you own will own you. Like there's that scene in Fight Club where uh, he's working a job that he hates to buy furniture he doesn't want. Yeah, there's a line, something like, work is your lowest dream. You numb the pain with clean tables to do drugs on. Uh, mm. I think that's mm. a paraphrase. I don't think those are, those are actual lyrics. Yeah, so to me, um, he's seeing the like pain behind life. And then, yeah, ire, righteous anger. Yeah, I, th I think he's like stewing in anger and he's, he's seeing some of the bullshit of the world. But I don't think that he's at his rock bottom with his drinking yet. And uh, that's my review so reasons not to be an idiot is like classic fucking frank turner so a couple of uh our buddies are huge frank turner fans that's where i have heard them him uh many times through them i was surprised just how many of these songs i remembered going through here vela used to listen to him i'm pretty sure quite a bit mike martin might be like the biggest uh frank turner fan i've ever met um, he, he actually showed me them <laughs> Okay, yeah, Bo Booch must have been listening to him at some point. So I was hearing him. I've never sat, like, went to ever listen to Frank Turner. Oh, also, uh, some other people who I knew uh, way back when, they, they've they seen him live a couple times. They were always talking about him. So he was big, I don't know, 10 years ago, somewhere around there. I mean, he's still big now, but I mean, like, uh, around people that I was around. Uh, so I heard a bunch of these, uh, and I don't know, I'm up and down with Frank Turner. And some, I don't know. I'm right now I'm up with him, but next tomorrow, whatever, I might be uh, on the downside with it. I don't know. Okay. So reason not to be an idiot, fucking classic Frank Turner, banger of a song, perfect single. So there are some songs that are really, really great on some of his records that weren't singles. Right. And some of them I'm like, well, how the fuck, who's in charge of this album? How is this not a single? But I, at the same point, I think it's a great song. 
but I'm not so sure it's representative of Frank Turner. Reasons not to be an idiot is. It's a perfect fucking single, especially like if this is your first big <clears throat> record that you're coming out with, and people heard that song and then they came in to hear the rest of the record, they wouldn't be disappointed. Oh, one line in that song that always makes me laugh. She's not as pretty as she thinks she is. Just picture her after she's had kids. And I, every time I hear that line, I think about Jomo because I feel like he'd be <laughs> laughing at that line as well. Uh, photosynthesis, not surprised that that was a single. <laughs> Uh, it's got more of that folk rock style than some of his other stuff. I'm more of a fan of the harder edge of the stuff he does. I know he, he doesn't prefer being that far out on the spectrum all the time. Um, I'll bring that up a little later on. Um, but I do prefer the harder edge. I think for me, that's where he shines, but there's going to be someone who likes the folk stuff and there's going to be someone who's like somewhere in between. Uh, song after that is called substitute, which, uh, music is my substitute for love. Catchy ass chorus. I am really surprised that was not a single. That shit would have made money. And there's something musically going on in that song that's like dark. It's like minor, but just for like a second. It's like if they're going between two notes uh, and the step down before they get to the note they're going for is like a minor or something. It's weird. I don't know what it is, uh, but I like it. I like when there's, because a lot of the stuff is more upbeat. So I like, you know, well, the vocals are more of like a downer in a lot of the things, but um, the songs are more upbeat, but when they put in these little kind of minor, dark kind of things, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. John, what do you think of this record? Ugh. Ugh. Uh, this is the album that makes me think, did the annoying guy with the guitar at the party finally get a record deal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, he did. Great. Good for fucking him. Holy shit. And, you know, one, one of my good friends, Butt Stabber, uh, his, he joked this weekend and said that, you know, I was pretentious because I did a, a video uh, interview with a buddy of, uh, of mine who's going to be on the show next week. And he said, Jomo, you're pretentious as fuck. And I was like, I'm not as pretentious as Frank Turner's music. Let's get that <laughs> shit out of the fucking way. <laughs> First off, how dare you? But <laughs> How dare me, okay? I just think the whole time I was listening to this fucking album, I was like, Chris Caraba wants his style back right now. If you don't know who the fuck that is, that's the lead singer of Dashboard Confessional. That, to me, there's nothing about this album that screams original or profound. I, I just want my 45 minutes back after listening to this uh, underwhelming shit. Thank you. Nice. Thanks, John. <laughs> You're like, you nice. fucking asshole piece of shit. I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> So the song that starts this record off is like half acoustic and then the band comes in the other halfway through. I like that dynamic. It's 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 probably not unique. Probably a billion people have fucking done it. But he he's not always playing an acoustic guitar, but for the most part, he's playing an acoustic guitar. So he has that kind of thing where he can play different parts and then the band comes in later. Uh, yeah, this isn't my favorite record either. I was actually surprised which one of these CDs became my favorite. So anyway, we have a song, uh, the, the what do you call it? Title track or whatever off this Love Iron song. Uh, fucking solid as hell. Oh, and one vibe that I get off a bunch of these songs is like an Irish drinking song, which I don't think that this guy has any ties to Ireland or anything. So I, I don't know why I'm getting that vibe. Maybe I'm the only one who gets it, but I can picture a lot of these uh, songs sung in a bar with like drunk ass people singing you, along. With wait, them. have you ever been to England? Uh, have you ever been to England? Oh, hey, you need to go to you need to go to the pub scene down there. They, they got a different pub scene than we do. It's way. Oh, okay. Um, and then there's a song on here, Imperfect Tense, uh, which as far as personally, like my taste in music, uh, that's what I think is one of the best songs in this album. Uh, again, I prefer like the rock side of the stuff to the folk side. Um, and uh, again, like that's a, that's a song that I think could have been an, uh, a single, but also I don't think it would necessarily be like representing this full album properly. You don't want to like have a single that sounds nothing like anything else on the record. Not saying it sounds nothing like it, but you know what I mean? It's like the other one that I was talking about fucking reasons uh not to be an idiot that song is representing kind of turner more than something like um imperfect tense also there's a missed opportunity for a guitar solo in that song it doesn't happen and there's almost no lead guitar ever in this band that's why when it finally happens later on i i had a full rock hard boner um jeff what do you think of this album yeah so this is the first album i ever heard from him like shortly after it came out like um a bunch of my friends had seen him like open up for i don't even know who and they were jacking on him real hard. What I like most about this album is like the the lyrics and the writing more than anything else. Um, when it came out, what two thousand eight or whatever, like it was just like he, it was like he was like writing from my mind. I love I knew Proof Rock. I think it's superb. Love I love the line. The only thing left to do is live. And you know back then it made total sense to me. Just not to be an idiot is one of the best songs. Um, Photosynthesis is kind of like his great his gateway drug. Everybody knows that one. It's great. It's awesome. Substitute is heart wrenching. Their half isn't my favorite, but the title track is my favorite. It's the perfect fuck you song. It's the perfect song on this record. Punk rock didn't live up to what I hoped it would be. 
the last thing I wrote was that, as everybody said earlier, "Long Live the Queen" is like an emotional, perfect friend song. So, it's not yeah, my favorite. Love... It's not my favorite album, but it's, it, it was the gateway album to listen to him. I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I love "Long Live the Queen." The Queen. I mentioned one of the lines: "You'll have to dance. You'll live to dance another day." It's just now you have to dance for the two of us. It's about I believe his you know his friend dying from uh, cancer, and he's talking to that person in the uh, <clears throat> the hospital or whatever, and that's what they say to him. Uh, the song photosynthesis towards the end it becomes i swear maybe i'm insane it becomes like a country dance song or something i don't know it's a weird vibe i could picture people like square dancing to it dressed up uh with like cowboy hats on the song this album ends with a song jet lag which is like it, instead of getting the acoustic guitar it's all piano based um and i don't mind the song right uh, but i think frank turner has a fucking bad problem with not knowing the proper structure of how to organize songs uh almost every one of these records ends with a song that i'm like why why the fuck is this the end of this record when you could have put the song in the middle and put anything else literally at the end so jet lag again it's not bad but it's like it doesn't it doesn't end on the way that i would think it would so you can like pretty much probably reorganize all these songs to make it hit harder than it does uh the song on here saint christopher is coming home it's pretty much as folk as you can get so if you're into that shit uh then you'll probably like it it's another one that reminds me of the irish drinking song and lastly a life worth keeping uh tons of going on tons going on in that song but um i don't know if i give a shit about it so yeah i don't know i i like maybe half the cd maybe three quarters and the rest of the songs i'm just like yeah i don't really care about them uh let's read some youtube comments first frank hits home with with some very hard truths about the things uh, I need to face in my life. Next person says, thanks for being so frank, Frank. Made me smile. Uh, I've had the CD playing in my truck for at least a month. Can't get enough. Next person says, story of my life. And lastly, thanks for the vocal antidepressants. Uh, does anyone else want to say anything about this record before we move on? It's Next. fucking raw. <laughs> it's fucking raw. All right. Let me drop the next. I'm going to say hi to Hayden. Oh, I hate it. Oh, you are my, oh, I'm like, I'm going to sign on real quick. Tell him, tell him. <laughs> no, he's doing, you know, know, he's, he's doing, he's doing, he's doing, he's cop now, bro. He's doing cop things, tag. bro. Yeah, bro. He's, you know, he's beating on minorities and, you know, taking their civil liberties away. <laughs> no big deal. He's just, just honest work. Yeah, <laughs> just honest work, daddy. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> All right, poetry. Poetry of the deed is a 13-track record released in 2009, coming just over 47 minutes long. It's Turner's third studio album, reaching number 36 on the UK albums chart, and contains the singles "The Road," "Poetry of the Deed," "Isabel," and "Try This at Home." Unlike Turner's previous albums, "Poetry of the Deed" was rehearsed, arranged, and recorded with his full band. In the album's liner notes, Turner states, "This album has been more of a collaboration process than on previous efforts." So, first and foremost, thanks are due to Ben Lloyd, Matt Nasir, Tarrant Anderson, and Nigel Powell. Turner kept fans up to date during the writing and recording of the album via his blog. Jumbo, do you have a blog? I should have a blog, and then uh, Homeland Security will be knocking on my door 10 minutes later. Yeah, that's true. That's a, that's a whole ongoing joke in How I Met Your Mother. Like, Barney has a blog that he's always updating and nobody reads it. Uh, after extensive touring <laughs> behind... <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> After extensive touring behind the release of Love, Ire, and Song in 2008, Turner began writing new material with a few songs appearing at gigs in late 2008. Before recording the album, Turner and his band played four gigs in Oxford in order to road test the new songs. The iTunes deluxe version of Poetry of the Deed includes four bonus acoustic tracks along with a music video for The Road, which received the status as hottest record in the world today by BBC Radio 1's Zane Lowe on July 14, 2009. Uh, Jomo, tell us how much you hate this album. First of all, I didn't know Big Black Cox had a network. Oh, geez. BBC? Any, no? Okay. I got him. But we just figured you watch that regularly. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. So if you want mediocre riffs and mundane lyrics, do you want those? No? Okay, too fucking bad. Because Poetry of the Deed has all that boring ass fucking shit. I, I, I just don't get it, man. I don't, I, I've been, I, I try to give this guy an honest shake about his music. And I kept thinking, why do some people like on Wikipedia and like uh, Rolling Stone classify this guy as punk? And he's just as punk as Green Day is, which is not real punk. It's like fall punk. Um, the the record doesn't speak to me. I when when I when I listen to shit like this, like uh, not not shit, but like uh, that uh, acoustic folky kind of music, I'm 
I think about like Floggy Molly. Floggy Molly had my attention. Um, it makes me want to drink. This makes me want to check myself into rehab. Um, it's not good <laughs> at all whatsoever. I need anger. I need frustration. I need, but I I need it in a way that's not delivered in an underwhelming fashion. I need it delivered to me like. I need to f- truly feel your pain, and I-, I don't get that because there's no aggression in this fucking album to me. He has just about as much aggression as a dude with, who's wearing New Balance and Jorts has, okay? And I, I, I don't know. It's fucked up. Th- this record is, it, it's just, it's not for me. There's not any song. I, I listened to probably about five or six songs throughout this album. I was like, all right, this is enough. Uh, I'd rather listen to Cardi B than than this stuff. But nice. That's my sick burn. Wow. Take it easy. So Jeff had mentioned that you said this is his uh, slump record, right? I, I mean, to me, at least there's like three songs that I really like on it. And the rest are kind of just skippables. Half this album I don't care about, uh, but the other half are some of my favorites. Try this at home is one of my favorite songs by, ever by Frank Turner. Uh, again, it has that like Irish drinking song feel. Uh, and if that song wasn't a single, I would say it was a fucking literal crime. There's a joke that always goes through Archer, whether they're saying something literally or figuratively. Anyway, uh, there's a song in here, Poetry of the Deed. It's like the big rock song of the album. It's not my favorite, but I can see people probably love it. Uh, Dan song. Oh, there's a harmonica in Dan song, and it's fucking great. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the album. Oh, it's another song that doesn't need a full band because it's it's stripped down, and I think it fucking works. This, this album opens with Live Fast, Die Old. There's an Alkaline Trio song called Live Fast, Die Young, and every time I see this fucking title, I think of that other song. Uh, chorus is great in it. There's a lot of energy. Oh, there's group singing as well, and at one point, they start like layering the group singing, and they go like, like picture, we have step one, and then we have layer to step two, and then it never keeps going. It's like, keep layering it, and like get it to the buildup, but that doesn't happen, and they so that's that's the swing and a miss. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't hate this album. Album. but yeah definitely half of it can be thrown in the trash jeff what do you why don't you tell us about this album or did you already say yeah. everything you had to say uh, no okay. so uh a story about the harmonica so when he used to play live probably around this a little bit later ever it came to parts like with a harmonica somebody would always come on stage and hold the harmonica for him and be like yeah i don't know how to use that dental dam shit i was yes. like, he would always call it a dental dam like the fucking <laughs> nice Bob dylan harmonica thing uh, this album has its high points and its low points i mean i i love try this at home some of them are just like uh, some of them are dicks <laughs> Uh, Dan's song means a lot to me, just for personal reasons. That I'd, whatever, I can go on and on about that. Love the line in uh, Sons of Liberty. If ever a man should ask you for your business or your name, tell him to go fuck himself and tell his friends to do the same. Mm. And, then yeah, the, yeah. and then the road I, is a really is, is a really good line. So I have that's my all thoughts I about that song, but mm. yeah, I I figured you would. That's that, that's why I tagged you in it. I was like, uh, is this corny or is this not corny? So well, I want I, wa- I wanted to save it for the episode, and here's why: is uh, yeah. the Sons of Liberty we know was like a underground movement that basically was just like, hey, it was a bunch of pissed off Americans who were just like, you know what, we should just drink and fight the British. All right, we're gonna go drink and fight. So they, they're a group who's, who helped start, you know, the, the, the Revolutionary War. I just don't, I think it's like cultural appropriation. I think it's disrespectful. And in, in England, England is a fucking, English people are known for that shit. You know, they, they got they, India, Africa. They basically just take shit and just say, yeah, this is ours now. And you're like, fuck, man, this is ours. No, it's ours now. You go fuck off with that song, England. Insightful, Jomo. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so Sons, Sons of Liberty, right? There's parts of that song. So I don't, I don't know if I like that song. The bass is good and everything, but um, there's points. Okay, we know the song "Shipping Off to Boston." When I hear that song, I want to fucking destroy something. Like I want to wreck someone's house or like oh, smash yeah, their plates brother. or some shit. Like that song specifically. It's like a like if they needed a song to play during war to make to like get people pumped up that's the song to play shipping off to boston like turns me into a wild animal so when i hear something like sons of liberty it's it's kind of getting you know that it's it's kind of feels like that but it just doesn't get me anywhere near as hyped so like if shipping off to boston is like full chub sons of liberty is like eighth of a chub for me it's still hanging low you know what i mean it's a quarter Uh, fast it's a quarter chub don't yeah it's quarter chub Uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, as the resident Dropkick Murphys uh, nerd of the of the group mm. here, that song wasn't even supposed to be recorded. The 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 guy recording the album was like, "Yo, you, you gotta fill like three more minutes. Just 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 play something." Nice. They fucking threw that shit off, and now it's like, like you said, it gives you full chub. Oh, yeah. Dude, that, that song just ass. hypes me the fuck up. I was walking <laughs> to the house with Becca the other day, and someone was on their porch playing that song, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm about to fucking go nuts!" And Becca's like, "Oh, like you don't like that song?" I was like, "No, I fucking love it. It, it make, makes me fucking go become an animal. Like it's just hmm. I don't know what about it. It just it's like a war song, dude. Yeah. It's so you good." You punch the guy in the face and stole his radio. 
Yeah, and like, no, and, sure or don't. you're like jerking off, and as you know, the song crescendos, you shoot your glizzy, yep. and you're like, oh, yep. shooting off That's to what... Boston, oh. <laughs> shooting ropes to Boston. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, uh, f- the f- the fastest way back home. Fucking boring. Like this is literally the this is literally the note I have for it. Nah, not for me. Boring as fuck. Song Isabel though, I think it's a great song. I think it's legitimately beautiful. Piano in the ending or a bit corny. Like it ends on the most stereotypical fucking major note, and it's lame. Uh, but there is a line that says, "So the world has changed, and I must change as well." Um, and I respect that line. I, I, I'm not an ageist. I probably talked about this before. I don't hate people because they're old. I hate people because they have old brains. People who don't want to change. They don't ever want to see anything from a different angle. They can fuck right off. Uh, one of my old bosses, he's probably like 75. Love that dude. He would have like get togethers at his house and I would go cause he was fucking cool. Uh, the road baseline is great. Uh, not my favorite song on the album. It, but it falls kind of right in between that folky style and the rock style. So I, anyway, I'm obviously way more towards the rock style, but it's legit. I don't know why the guy said it was the fucking, what did I say he said? Uh, hottest record in the world today. Yeah, I don't Bruh. agree with that, but um, what's up? No, no, I'm just like, yeah, okay. Oh, it's just, just a bro moment? Yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> Rob, what do you think of this record? Um, so I listened to some of this album. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, I love do-it-yourself songs. And I think that uh, as I judge how much he's probably drinking during this album, it's like, okay, I, th- I think he's he has some of the stuff that's going to get him out of his problem sooner or later. And like doing it yourself is, uh, you know, that's that's essential. That's how you build uh, the life that you want to live. So yeah, like I... Like he, there's hope for him here, and then there's like a song where he's like he's talking about how important it is to get your friends and drink outside and like you know play music or whatever. So it's like to him having fun is still drinking, and uh, you know that's what you need to have fun. But it, but again, there's also be outside, uh, be with your friends. There's other things there, so there's hope for him. So although I assume that he's drinking a bunch at this, I don't think he's at rock bottom yet. So I didn't listen to this album completely but uh you know i think that th- that frank turner gets better and better with each album so i'm just gonna say it's it's a good enough album uh not my favorite and that's it for now yeah so one of the songs on here uh sunday nights one of my favorite bands of all time american aquarium i know no one's ever heard of them i'd like to do them at some point on here they're like a smaller time uh country rock band at one point they were like my favorite band on planet earth anyway uh they've gone away from that and every time i hear them now i'm like what the fuck is this band doing anyway uh sunday nights reminds me of them uh i had never heard that song before this album ends with journey okay don't know what the thing of it like ending your albums with the wettest fart possible i don't i cannot comprehend it okay so like the song i don't i don't hate the song okay but it's like whose idea was it to end this record this way i need to know because just reshuffle the mix send it to me i'll remix this fucking thing i mean not do any work i'll literally just put them in a different order uh but yeah i don't know it's you gotta you gotta end with a banger too or at least something that's fucking awesome. Uh, another song on here, Our Lady of the Campfires. Uh, oh, so the piano in that song reminds me of like an 80s metal song, but it's too like a slow fucking acoustic song. Uh, there's tremolo picking, guitar picking in that song, which I'm I'm always up for. Every time I hear it, it makes my ears perk up. Uh, as a whole, though, song does nothing for me. Same with Faithful Son. It does absolutely nothing for me. Uh, it should be this powerful song. I don't give a shit about it. And then Richard Devine. So Dick Devine, right, is, a, is, is the name of the song. Uh, fucking piano is bomb. There is this really subdued guitar that I was like, okay, this dude is not, like, he doesn't have this ego trip. Who's ever playing electric guitar? It sounds good. It's very subdued. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs in this album. Uh, and I think it could have been a single. I think that would have been a good representation of this record. Uh, again, to me, the more money you make off singles, the more money you can make it rain on strippers. Just remember that. Hell yeah, uh, some YouTube comments. Man, I've been hooked ever since I heard Frank. Definitely one of the greatest musicians of our time, if not the greatest. What do you think about that, Jomo? Fucking, I cut my dick off right now. That's bullshit. So whenever I need a little a little pick-me-up, you know, i got to put a little pep in my step, I'll blast some Lawrence Arms, right? Who, you know, you guys know I love Brendan Kelly. And I get full chub immediately when I is listen it, to something like Metro. because you want to suck his dick or what? what's going on? I don't want to suck his dick. I want platonic relationship. Mm, okay. Uh, but Turner gets me like quarter chub, right? 
depends. Sometimes I'm half chub, but Brandon Kelly, I'm just always full chub. I'm walking around with like uh, just a hard on the whole time. I'm listening to triple. Uh, the message speaks to me hard. Next person says, can't believe it's taken me this long to hear this guy. So talented. Frank is the real thing. Uh, totally open and honest and makes you feel like he is everybody's friend. Whenever I listen to him for long enough, I feel my life getting better. No, uh, no other music really does that. For a while during this week, I was contemplating if this whole Frank Turner thing is a facade, right? Like this fake face being put out. I was like, I don't know if I believe that this guy is who he's trying to be. Maybe that's like full conspiracy theorist wacko. I don't know. But that definitely was something I was thinking about throughout the week. Uh, is this guy putting on a show or is he actually as genuine as he wants everyone to think he is? Does anyone else want to say anything about Poetry of the Deed before we move on? Next. England Keep My Bones is a 12-track record released in 2011, coming in just over 44 minutes long. It's Turner's fourth studio album, reaching number 143 on the U.S. Billboard 200 and number 12 on the U.K. Albums Chart, and contains the singles I Still Believe, Peggy Sang the Blues, If I Ever Stray, and Wessex Boy. Amidst extensive touring in support of Poetry of the D, Turner and his then-untitled backing band recorded 2010's Rock and Roll EP, which was written at the same time as Poetry of the Deed. They would go on to name themselves The Sleeping Souls after a lyric in the song I Am Disappeared, in the pathways of the sleeping soul of the country. Followed, following the release of Rock and Roll, Turner and the band spent 20 days recording England Keep My Bones. Turner has said, if the music I make is a spectrum that has acoustic folk stuff on one end and rock music on the other, with Poetry of the Deed, the needle was over towards the rock end that's fine to do on occasion but i think as a general thing i'd rather be somewhere a bit more in the middle the album's title was taken from william shakespeare's play the life and death of king john with turner noting i knew that the album was for the most part about mortality and englishness when i read that i was like oh jumbo's gonna love this record then uh, shakespeare seemed like a good place to go hunting for some pearls of wisdom and with a little help from my friend ben we came across this line and it just seemed to fit the work really well glory hallelujah was written to be an atheist song with the same feel of a christian song to put out the other side of the argument uh england keep my bones has been certified gold jeff what do you think of this record it's my favorite by far my, my favorite uh frank turner record um it's the one that gets the most play uh eulogy is the perfect intro like of any album ever uh Ooh. peggy sang the blues is my is my favorite frank turner song no one gets remembered for the things that, that they didn't do I still still believe is like a chills inducing song. Uh, he's great at storytelling. He's got pure talent in the song English Curse. And I can't read my notes, but uh, one foot in front of the other. And then I wrote the whole. I wrote ho Glory Hallelujah uh, question mark because I want to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Yeah, this is the album I, that if I'm gonna listen to Frank Turner, I'm gonna listen to this album. The first like four tracks on it are just bang, 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 bang. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. It's the reason I picked it this week because I wanted to know what you guys think about it because it's it to me it's his, it's his best album. Yeah, one foot before the other. Uh, I don't know how that wasn't a single, but it's an absolute banger of a song. Should have been a single. Uh, so, okay, Eulogy. I agree with, with Jeff. It's one of the best intro songs of all time. I don't know if it's the best, but it is fucking awesome. The trumpet in that song is perfect. I love it. It does everything for me. This still is not my favorite Frank Turner record. Uh, Peggy Sang the Blues, That's again, that's the classic Frank Turner feel. Uh, everybody's going to know exactly who it is when it comes on. Another banger of a song. Uh, ending is awesome as well. There's a, a song on here that I forgot about, If I Ever Stray. I forgot that song existed. I remember it came out. What I say? It was 2011, so I remember it around that time somewhere. Uh, but I haven't thought of it since. So all the people who I currently hang out with do not listen to Frank Turner. So I, I, he hasn't even crossed my mind in years. Oh, and that, so if I ever stray, that's that proper single for a Frank Turner record. It represents his style and everything perfectly. So yeah, Glory Hallelujah was one that I, I want to know everyone's thoughts as well. I'm not sure if this song is cringe or not. Um, I mean, I agree with what he's saying in it, uh, but I don't know if it might be too cunty of a view um maybe not uh, regardless i it ends the record which i think is another fucking crime uh the song right before that redemption is very possibly his best singing on this entire album should have ended it fucking amazing song and then they followed up with glory hallelujah i don't know the song i don't hate it i don't love it i'm just like like if you were to play this today for somebody would they be like oh that's that's cringy i don't know rob what do you think of this record 
I like this album. It was um, so I I like the instrumentation. Like uh, we we were talking about how rock should this band be and, and whatever you know. Like I I liked folk rock. I liked bands that used mandolins that have like a kind of punk thing, but like also mandolins and in violins and whatever else. I've always liked stuff like that. I also like metal bands that use uh, violins and stuff like that. So it's like uh, I don't know. To me, I I like mixing those things that don't necessarily belong. Like there are metalheads that believe keyboards don't belong in metal it should be all blast beats it should be you know to me i fucking i love keyboards i love fucking anyways back to frank turner to me this album was like kind of i i heard more of the not distorted guitar instrumentation and that to me it was a plus the britishness of this album kind of stuck out to me uh jack had asked out he wonders how um genuine this guy is when i hear like super patriotic uh anything the feeling I get is kind of like a cringy feeling. It's like uh, you're you're trying to either appeal to like a, a monetary like thing, or um, you aren't sure of yourself, so you latch on to whatever groups already exist. You know, those are judgmental things of me to say. But anyways, uh, I I get like weirded out when I hear stuff that's too patriotic, and there's there's. But yeah, yeah, he he loves British bodies of water, which I fucking love water. I love the ocean and whatever. So it's like uh, I I give him a pass overall. Um, Redemption might be my favorite song in this album. I love the dynamics of it. I've said this before, but I feel like dynamics are an element of music that isn't played with enough. I feel like too many bands just play the same fucking volume all the time i love it when a band can can get quiet intentionally control it so yeah redemption really uh the, the instrumentation of it really left out of me is awesome uh, now i assume that this is his rock bottom as far as drinking and like uh nihilism and hating the world and all of that uh, you know, so in Redemption and in Glory, Hallelujah, his perception of God is this, you know, checklist type God is where it's like, if I commit one crime, then every good thing I ever done is uh, erased. And so in the AA world, this is kind of like, you know, th- this is the sort of thing that uh, causes a lot of atheism and hating the world and then drinking yourself to death, where it's like, okay, that's that's such a childish way to view God. Okay, I, I lied one time and therefore I go to hell forever. No, that's not how this fucking works your your shitty ass attitude towards this concept is what's causing you to you know give yourself this excuse to drink yourself to death fucking grow up anyways Mm. uh yeah uh glory hallelujah no god okay overbearing priest you know i was atheist for a long time and it's i was mad at priests you know i've we've all heard the stories of pedophile priests they exist uh they're fucking bad people uh, some people become atheists because pedophile priests exist. Uh, be mad at the person. Don't be mad at, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, glory, hallelujah. Blame failings on imaginary beast. Uh, yeah, that is. <laughs> if you use a religion to excuse your bad behavior, uh, you're using it wrong. Fighting over land, finger pointing. Yeah, he's describing problems with, uh, let's call it Christianity, you know, I have problems with Christianity too, so I relate to what he's saying, but I do think that it contains a fucking pissy ass attitude, and I think he's missing the point. But uh, so that's why I think that he's at a rock bottom spiritually, but I think he turns it around. I think that uh, his attitude changes over the course of the next two albums. And so, uh, yeah, musically, I like this album quite a bit. Spiritually, I, 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 you know, I assume his drinking problem is at rock bottom during this album, and that's it. There's a song on here called English Curse. Uh, <laughs> is is, is, yeah, is yeah. a song about bad teeth? Oh, yeah. dude, this dude's band has the worst teeth. Like, like, <laughs> I wish, like, I wish I segued that last uh, week when we when we were talking about how Hot Fuzz had awful teeth. I was gonna segue into <laughs> well, next week we're doing this, but yeah, that's all. Go ahead, continue. Oh, sorry, Joe. Mo, do you prefer bad teeth or bad titties? Like, if you had to pick one or the other. Ooh. Oh man! I'm taking bad teeth. I'm taking bad teeth. I need a nice pair of teeth. I, I mm, she can keep the brawn. Teeth are a big deal for me. <laughs> Why did you put that back on for the support? <laughs> you can't unfuck teeth unless you get like a serious, <laughs> serious brace job or whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah. Jesus. All right, English curse. Okay, 
there's there's a live version of Plain Sailing Weather on YouTube, and he's flat like five times in it, uh, like noticeably flat. Not me critiquing shit with like a tuner. Like it's noticeably like the wrong note that he sings. So English Curse, when I'm listening to it, I don't believe that this is real. I don't believe he sings the song perfectly with nothing behind it. Uh, if he does, good for him. Congratulations. I don't believe this is natively done. Uh, I think that there is an underlying there's underlying music, and they removed it when he was done singing uh, maybe that's the fucking pessimist in me but i've heard him sing live and he's great like he, he he can sing i'm just saying for to sing the whole song unless he did 50 60 takes of this i doubt this is real personally if he did good for him uh, otherwise there's no backing music in this he just sings the whole fucking song and with nothing and cool I just don't believe it. Uh, I Am Disappeared, great song. This is another one that could have ended the CD. I still think, like, there's no coming back from Redemption. It's just such a fucking great song. Uh, and then I Still Believe is another one of the singles from this. Uh, the backing band, that song is, like, nothing short of amazing. I love them in the back. Uh, one of my notes here, this song definitely fucks. Mm. So it does. And again, it's that kind of harder edge that we're getting to a Frank Turner that I like. So it's right it's right up my alley. Uh, Jumbo, what do you think of this record? All right, you guys you guys had all great points. This is actually the more tolerable album for this past week. I thought it wasn't bad. I'd have to say, you know, the the opening track eulogy, uh love the Freddie Mercury reference, you know, it's you know, just English people just picking back of shit they already done, you know. <laughs> trying to get more more uh more clout, chasing more clout for shit that they don't need. It's it's true, not all of us were born to be great and I, I, I'll just say this. Enjoy life for what it is, okay? Some people were born to be politicians who take money from special interest groups and lobbyists while, you know, being investigated for sex crimes with underage people and <laughs> voting for financial measures that will improve your uh, stock portfolios and those who are rich while placating to the constituents for their vote but not delivering on your promise. Those people were unfortunately born, you know, but we're all born for something. God, isn't America great? Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's so great, you know? Um, songs I did like, okay? I, I like I Still Believe. I like the opening eulogy. I will agree with Jeff that eulogy is a banger. It's not the greatest opening of all time, but it is a good opener for... Uh, That's for, Welcome to the Jungle. Shut the fuck up, bitch. I'm talking. Sorry. Don't you ever <laughs> interrupt me again Sorry. with some Sorry. horse shit about Guns N' Roses. <laughs> You fucking bootlicking okay. supplicant. Get your tongue out of Axel Rose's asshole, you motherfucker. How dare you? If anyone who's a bootlicker, how I, the can fuck I am I? Can I, can I finish? <laughs> All right. All can right. I fucking finish? All right. All right. Okay. Fuck. All right. So songs I did like. I still believe. I like the opener eulogy. I Am Disappear was great. And uh, uh, One Foot Before the Other, I thought it was a great song. All right. It's, it's my ideal record versus all the others. When you talk about Frank Turner, okay? And don't you ever fucking interrupt me again. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if I said it, but this still isn't my favorite album by him. Oh, uh, Rivers, the acoustic guitar in that song is fucking beautiful, right? Crystal clear. Song bores, bores me to tears. I don't ever want to hear that song again. Uh, Night Becomes Day. Oh, I think there's a cello in the background. There's something going on. Piano, I don't know. Something go is going on back there. Nice song. One of my favorites. And then Wessex Boy. Well, even though it's a single, I've never heard that song before. Uh, so I think out of like most of his stuff, that's like this hidden gem song that even though it is a single and people like know about it, I don't know about it. And it's fucking good. I loved it. The video, he looks young as balls in the video too. Also, there's this one point in the video where he's playing while leaning up against the wall and this lady walks in front of him. And I was thinking if this was a Steel Panther video, because like right when she walks by him, she then goes off the other side of the screen. They would have followed her like they were going to go try to have sex with her, but he didn't do that. So. Oh, yeah. All right, let's read some YouTube comments. Move on. Uh, some of the best I've ever come across. Next person says, I'm pretty sure this has to be a meme. I'm 11. I've seen four of his shows and playing harmonica on stage one time. Best experience of my life. But Jeff said that people, I guess they used to just hold the harmonica. This is probably a troll. Uh, next, this is truly quality music, passionate and sincere. Next one says, it never fails to lift my spirits. And lastly, listen, replay, repeat. Anyone else want to say anything about England Keep My Bones before we move on? No. All right, Tape Deck Heart is a 12-track record released in 2013, coming in just over 50 minutes long. It's Turner's fifth studio album, reaching number 52 on the U.S. Billboard 200 and number two on the U.K. Albums Chart. It contains the singles Four Simple Words, Recovery, The Way I Tend to Be, Losing Days, Oh Brother, and Polaroid Picture. 
After extensive touring in support of 2011's England Keep My Bones, which included an appearance during the 2012 Summer Olympics opening ceremony and a headline show at Wembley Arena, uh, Turner and the Sleeping Souls flew to Los Angeles to enter the studio. Described as a breakup album, Tape Deck Heart was written and recorded following the collapse of a long-term romantic relationship. Turner stated, there's a lot of stuff on this record about loss and failure in relationships, about what happens when something that was supposed to be timeless runs out of time. The artwork was done by tattoo artist Heather Ann Law, and the title is taken from a lyric in the song Telltale Signs. These telltale signs are here to stay, and in the end, you know that's okay, because they will always be a part of my patched up, patchwork, taped up, tape deck heart. Uh, Turner stated, a tape deck heart is someone who has a love of music above anything else. I don't miss cassettes, but I am of an age whose music listening life was defined by a Walkman and C90 tapes. Tape deck heart has been given a parental advisory label due to the profanity heard on tracks Plain Sailing Weather and Good and Gone. Uh, tape deck heart has been certified gold. Rob, what do you think of this record? Uh, I like it. I'm going to say this is like the most pop album so far. Like uh, you hear recovery and there's so many words in that song. To me, that's like a, a pop technique is like fill it with a billion words. Uh, w vocals and words are the most important thing. Yeah, so I, I like this album. It isn't my favorite. There are songs, there are singles that I really fucking love on this album. The first couple of tracks, basically. Uh, but yes, yeah, and, and I like the instrumentation and all that. But yeah, to me, I'm going to guess that he got sober uh, but his so his his sobriety has started, but it's not perfect yet. He's still codependent. He uh, let's see. I don't know how many female names are on this album. I know there's Amy, Amelie, and probably some other ones. So as far as I'm concerned, he's he's latching on to every female around. Okay, you said Amelie's it was it's movie, about. Though. Okay, sure. You said it was a uh, breakup record, so I'm probably twisting and misinterpreting everything, but I'm going to keep going with my judgmental opinions any anyways. So recovery, uh, the, you know, they use that word, you know, recovering from alcoholism, w whatever. But yeah, like, yeah, latching on to romantic stuff and making your, uh, your, your recovery based on someone else, that's like fucking building a house on quicksand. But uh, this comes up in the next album, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that concept later. The way I tend to be, uh, the way the way you shine like truth in all you do, fucking love that. Uh, but yeah, telling the truth is an essential part of regaining your soul. If your brain lies to you, uh, if your addiction lies to you, then telling the truth is the way that you regain your soul. So it's like the way you shine like truth in all you do, that's like... Uh, yeah, the, the some of us would say that the telling the truth is the fucking human value. You know, it's like there's not much value in having a lot of objects or, you know, whatever. It's like the best thing you can do if you want to be a good person is start start to tell a fucking truth. And so the way he says that truth is 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 a, a valuable thing to see in another person fucking yeah so i th i think that he's on to good things uh there's a, a live video for polaroid picture that i was watching and at the beginning of it he said uh take a picture then make a new good memories so what happens to a lot of uh, people with active uh, addiction is they remember bad shit that happens and they they fucking stew on it and that's a recipe to be miserable fucking forever uh, because you can't change the past and no matter how angry you get at it, you don't fucking affect anything. So the, the answer to that is to do new things, start a new band. Uh, you know, these are things that he's been saying all along, but I think that he's like, uh, I think this has come more to the focal point to him. I think, yeah. So yeah, if you want to get out of your old, uh, misery, it's form a new band do a new thing yeah take a picture of whatever beauty you're seeing in front of you appreciate it and continue to, to do new things that's like a good recipe for living a good high quality life so jack loves lawrence arms i, I gotta say that like that to me a big tr contrast between this band and that band i kept hearing in in lawrence arms this like this town is dead this town is fucked let's get drunk it's the only hope we have to me that is so fucking that just makes me want to fucking slip my wrists and die <coughs> this is why i love frank turner more than lawrence arms <laughs> Ooh, uh, and that's all i gotta say for now that hurts Ooh. yo are, Ooh. are we gonna end up on the same cd being our favorite i think it's gonna happen Oh, can so. you imagine Brendan Kelly with his awful voice trying to sing English curse with no backing band? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> no, I can. And it, it would be fucking great. Hey, Jomo, kick Jeff out of this, please. <laughs> <laughs> Delete. You are now removed from the server. <laughs> so still not my favorite album. 
the, some of the songs on here are are my favorites he's ever done. Playing Sailing Weather is one of my favorite songs he's ever fucking done. Amazing song. One of the songs in here, The Way I Tend to Be. I brought this up. Okay. I have different senses, obviously. Vision, hearing, feeling. People uh, downplay scent a lot. There's a line in here, then I catch myself catching your scent on someone else in a crowded place, and it takes me to somewhere I cannot quite place. That has happened to me a couple times in my life. And I, there's because one of them was like this teacher I had when I was like in third grade, and she had she wore this like very distinct fucking perfume. And like 20 years later, I was walking somewhere, I smelled it. And like, if someone had asked me, hey, what perfume does she wear? I would have no fucking clue. But when I smelled this, I knew immediately that was her. I mean, it wasn't her, but I'm saying like, knew immediately that was what she used to wear. And that is happened to me also with like one of my ex-girlfriends like way way after the last time i've ever seen her i smelled some someone else were like wearing perfume or whatever that she did and it, it will immediately like it's so powerful the set the sense of smell that it can just like recover memories like immediately so that line stuck with me quite a bit uh recovery and losing days are both very frank turner songs recovery is a fucking banging uh song to open with so polaroid picture i have to say this is one of the times that uh, I thought he was going to do something and he didn't, and I'm happy he didn't. I thought he was going to rhyme with you with picture, Ooh. and he didn't. He says with you. So <laughs> he says, make sure you take a Polaroid picture and keep it with you. And I thought he was going to say and keep it with you, and I was going to say, don't fucking do that. Do not rhyme it don't like you that. Fucking and he did. So good for him. He, pa he passes the test. Uh, Polaroid nice. picture is a great song, great single. Yeah, I mean, there's more that can be done to whore out on this album, but definitely they the singles here are very representative very representative of it jomo how much you hate this record oh i hate it that's it thank you okay uh jeff what do you think of this album <laughs> um, um it's okay i like the way i tend to be a lot it's actually some of my friends who who love frank turner's favorite song plain sailing weather's a gut punch like we said the problem with falling in love in late night bars is that there's always more nice there's always more bars the problem with showing your love or your scars is that everyone's lovers are covered in scars the fucking superb record i love, I love that line, line. yeah also love the line. It's not from that song. I don't, I don't know what song it's from where he says, well, fuck you, Hollywood, for teaching us that love is free and easy. That's a fucking great line, too. Ugh. And actually, in that song, he says, fuck you, Motley Crue, too, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that stuck out to me when he said that. Yeah. And then no matter how many times I've listened to the to the song uh, Telltale Signs, I'm never, like, mentally prepared for it. That song's a fucking a punch. Uh, four Simple Words is great and energetic. My friends are kind of split on it. Some love it. Some think it's the worst. And then uh, I wrote down, you know, Forget about your bitching. Remember that you're blessed. Punk is for the kids who never fit in with the rest. And then uh, Polaroid Picture is Polaroid Picture. It's probably the best song on the record. That's all I got. I want to back jump back to Jomo because I... Were you joking? You have actually nothing more to say. No, they suck. Thank you. Uh, okay. Telltale Signs? <laughs> okay. That is a song that lyrically I've always remembered. I heard this back when it came out, right? I, I've always remembered the lines in that song. Uh, it's one of my favorites. The whole idea is like you make mistakes when you're younger and now you're embarrassed of them when you're older and some of them you can't cover up. Uh, and it's it's really good. I do love that song. It's very deep. Okay, four simple words. I appreciate that it's a punk song. <clears throat> the chorus is fucking stupid and it's still not the dumbest song in his catalog, which I'll be talking about on the next album. <laughs> But it's fucking stupid and it's dumb. And I, the only thing that I give it is I appreciate it's a punk song. Other than that, it can fuck off. There's a song in here anymore. My comments again. Nope. Nah. Nope. Not my thing. <laughs> that song could fuck off. Uh, oh, brother. That's a song I'm pretty surprised was a single. It sounds bland to me. There's nothing special about it. And I would not have picked that. All right. Now we're ending this album. Broken Piano. I can't believe these motherfuckers still have not learned a lesson all this time in. I don't understand how you end the CD like this, okay? When you could have just taken this and put it anywhere else. It's, it's not that the song is bad. This is not the song to end this record. Uh, end it with Polaroid Picture. Like Jeff said, it's the best fucking song in the album or one of them. You could end it with that. There's many songs that could have ended this. This is not one of them. Put it somewhere else in the mix and don't end it with it. Oh, yeah, and then the Fisher King Blues uh, is another one of those songs. It's, it's like two-thirds acoustic, one-third with the band. I've mentioned it before. I like that dynamic. Uh, but the last third of the song is what makes it. The first two thirds, I could care less about. So if the song is three minutes long, you could cut the first two minutes off and then the, just leave the one minute and I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. All right, let's read some YouTube comments and we'll move on. The way I tend to be plays every 10 hours in the Walmart where I work. Next one says, I can find a song... Uh, for every emotion I want to express. Next one says his ability to write about such dark and depressing subject matter and make it so upbeat is amazing. Uh, Frank Turner is brilliant. And lastly, Tape Deck has got me through the last 12 months of the worst part of my life. Uh, would anyone else like to say anything about Tape Deck Heart before we move on? 
if that person is working at a Walmart for more than 10 hours in a row, they need to reevaluate their work situation. Uh, that's, that's a good point. They're getting worked to the bone. Yeah. All right, let me drop this artwork. Oh, yeah. Positive Songs for Negative People is a 12-track record released in 2015, coming in just under 40 minutes long. It's Turner's sixth studio album, reaching number 69 on the U.S. Whoa. Billboard 200. Oh, whoa! Giggity, giggity, giggity. Giggity, giggity, number giggity, two. giggity. <laughs> and number two on the U.K. album's chart and contains the singles The Next Storm, Josephine, Mittens, and Love 40 Down. Positive Songs for Negative People receive favorable reviews, but some... Music critics were divided over Turner, Turner's vocal delivery and lyricism, and others saying it was derivative of his previous works. In November 2015, Turner went on uh, an extensive worldwide tour to promote the record, along with his first box set, The First Ten Years. Regarding the Sleeping Souls contributions, Turner noted, They arrange with me. I turn, I turn up with songs that are finished to the extent that they have verses, choruses, middle eighths, uh, chord progressions and vocals i generally have some ideas of what i want them to do people will suggest a guitar or piano line but i retain power of veto it's a dictatorship rather than than a democracy to be honest without getting too precious about this i pay them to be in my band i don't want to be in a band if i did then i do that this is my project uh, positive songs for negative people has been certified silver so when i was talking about the way i feel about frank turner when i read this See, there are bands that will always rather be a group than be individual. One way that you can tell that is if you go to rip a CD or you see the writing credits of somebody, for example, Tool. The four of them are not written out individually. It says written by Tool, whatever, done by Tool. It is the band Tool. Lawrence Arms is exactly the same. I get that this is his band. I get that he is the main songwriter. However, if he really lives in this world where he thinks that the people he plays with isn't a band and hasn't contributed an insane amount to his music, he's fucking insane. I don't care if you play with different uh, musician on every record. They are all going to contribute something different. When I play in Hollow Teeth, Nick and I, who both play guitar, play com we play a lot of the same things, but we play them in different ways. So people, the human being, the human element of something is what makes something different or is what is changing something that you come in sure you come in with a song but are you telling me you wrote the piano you wrote the trumpet you wrote all this shit probably not i mean i'm not saying he's not a composer i'm just saying are people playing and they're contributing just seems kind of a dickhead when he talks about it like that now the reason he does that he was in a band before this called million dead where it was like a post hardcore band i listened to it because i was wondering because uh in hollow teeth there's a bit of singing but for the most part it's screaming uh so i was wondering like what does this guy's voice sound like when he screams and he doesn't it's just like his normal singing voice here but it's in a hardcore band uh so he said once the end of million dead rolled around i just didn't want to be in a band anymore the last year of million dead was just murderous for four people who want to kill each other in a van driving around europe it's no fun uh so even though this guy wants to live in this reality where he's not in a band he is in a band and um they're human beings and they're contributing so they're just as important as everybody else uh this is my favorite album by him that we listened to which i was surprised that it's his lowest rated record on metacritic it has a score of you ready jomo oh god <laughs> uh, all of his other albums have 70 and above so surprised he didn't have one album in the 90s i think 81 was his highest which is his newest record and maybe the first one uh, so he doesn't have any a's on his report card but he has a b minus to be his highest um it, this record feels less bloated to me as well and i think you could have pimped out this entire album singles you see I think that every all the time jesus have been. christ you can't pimp Dude, all the songs out I, because I'm seeing that money, baby. I want to just make it rain on hot strippers. So I'm trying to see with that money where I can get it. You know what I mean? Jumbo, what do you think of this record? Uh, you know, what I thought about record, crikey. Uh, mate, it, it's a, it gave me a good tug and a wank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, went down to the pub, had me a Foster's. Oi! It's, I don't know. I, I just, this guy, I, I'm going to piggyback off of what you just said, man. This dude is fucking full of himself. I don't like him, and I think he has a small penis. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> I'm not really. I, I this is a tough week to listen to all this stuff because I was like, you know what? Don't I say this every week? Don't don't be judgmental. And then like that little demon on my shoulder is like, this fucking shit sucks. All right, you don't like this shit. This ain't you. I was gonna say it's funny that Jomo's telling someone else to not be judgmental. <laughs> Okay. Wait, continue. I'm telling myself, you dumbass. So I'm oh, 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 is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling myself, don't be judgmental. 
you and know, Joe go, tells himself to not be judgmental. Go go in there with an open mind. This guy is the Phoebe Buffet of English singers. I don't like it. It's fucking trash. <laughs> it's fucking not. In, in the end, it's not good. The only thing I really like is the only album that I thought was tolerable is England Keep My Bones. The rest is just like smelly cat for fucking pretentious douchebags. Thank you. I want to talk about the dumbest song in this entire fucking catalog. It's called Mittens. Um, <laughs> the music is fine. Okay, but okay so the the chorus is we used to fit like mittens but never like gloves i understand that a glove is a more exact fit than a mitten right why in the fuck would you not want to fit like a mitten where your fingers are next to each other okay if you fit with someone like a mitten that means you're next to each other kind of rubbing up on each other instead of being like gloves where you're separated like your fingers are like physically fucking separated from each other i don't know what he's getting at if he's not getting at that because i've never put a mitten on and been like oh this doesn't fit like a glove so i don't know what the fuck anyway the song is trash it can fuck right off i'm surprised that it was a single because it is so stupid and every time i heard the, the chorus of the song it's like he's trying to be say something that's like moving and something that's like what is it like something that's really you know, deep and it's the dumbest shit i've ever heard so fuck that song okay get better how that is not the lead single of this album is beyond me uh the harmony singing in it is is fucking awesome and his voice sounds great okay and i hope his voice sounds great from honing it and being a musician for 10 years and not from autotune. I don't know if they use autotune. I'm just saying it sounds really fucking good. So I hope that it was because he's just become a really great singer. All right. The Angel of Islington. I don't Ugh. even know if I like this song, right? Ugh. It's the opening song in the album. I don't know if I even like it, but I don't know if this even makes sense. I think it opens up the record well. I don't know if I even like it, but I think it opens up the album well. I don't have a note here. Not sure if that even makes sense. And then next one, I want to talk about the next storm. The song like has a swing to it. I was like, is this like a waltz or some shit? I was like, is this song in three, four? It isn't. Uh, but somehow it still has this swing to it. Oh, and holy hell, there is finally a lead guitar line. And I've talked about this in other bands where the, the guitar player is doesn't, I don't know if they're nervous or don't think that they're good or what the fuck they're doing, uh, but they're not playing lead very often. So I, I get it. It's good. Give me more. He has a couple albums after this. Hopefully he continues it. Um, and I think the song's good. Uh, Jeff, what do you think of this record? Yeah, so this is actually probably like, well, besides like his new albums, like the my least listened to, because I always just like kind of stopped after England, Keep My Bones and Dick Deckhart. But uh, Get Better is great. Mittens is Mittens. Uh, you, you, you kind of described it all already. Uh, Out of Breath is good. I like, I like the song Demons. I really like the, the guitar and bass work in the, in the song Demons. Um, Silent Key is probably my favorite song on the record. Then Song for Josh is so oof, because it's heavy that's all i got yeah demons is a banger on this as well piano and bass are great this is one of my favorite songs in here song for josh i don't know it's a frank turner song like other ones i I'm, I'm not in love with it and it definitely uh shouldn't have ended this record that's another one i don't know it's like how how do you strike out every fucking time with the last song on your album it's the next one i want to talk about out of breath perfect tempo perfect time in the record perfect fucking song uh, the song makes me come buckets and uh, there's lead guitar in it. And I want more uh, glorious. You another one of my favorites on here should have been a single, the opening act of spring. It's like a bluegrass song. I'm in, I'm, I, I think it's good. Uh, make it, fuck it, make it a single, make that money. All you're going to do is take the money you make off of it anyway, and put it back into the economy by going to the local strip club and making it rain on prostitutes, uh, prostitutes on strippers Jesus Christ. who also could be prostitutes Same thing. while, while, while eating at the, the, uh, all, at the buffet that they have there. So it's, it just goes right back into the economy. Rob, what do you think of this record? So this is my favorite album. I'm definitely going to be listening to it a lot. And uh, But, you know, you guys aren't necessarily wrong with some of your criticisms of it. It's not a perfect album. It's one of the things about, like, my taste is if there are a couple of songs that I'm fucking fanatical about, I will forgive all sorts of, like, stuff that I don't like <clears throat> about it. Because, you know... A lot of my favorite albums of all time have like three songs that I love, and then just like I don't even listen to the rest of the album. Doesn't matter. It's like if I, if I'm if I'm if I'm in on three songs, that's that's like a uh, that's a good album to me. One thing about this album, I think that the the melodies and the instrumentation of the band is the best uh, that it is in any. Like I, there are so many moments in which. Uh, li guitar layering is like what makes my heart sing. Like, um, um, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but yeah, like it's weird that you that you talked about how um, his like combative attitude towards his band there. Like, I don't know what's going on there. 
because my comment is I feel like to me this album is a little less pop, uh, a little less like lyrics, and a little bit more band that has like instruments that like uh, have this melodic fullness to it that I don't think we necessarily have in other albums. Now I want to talk about how Get Better to me I. Guess, the reason I think that his okay, so po- positive songs for negative people. Uh, AA is a positive program for negative people, so that's why I think that his. I think that he is not drinking anymore, and he's um, his. I think his sobriety has gotten better. You know, uh, there's there's two lines I want to read on get better. She took a plain black mar- marker, started writing on my chest. So it's like the female is like the agent and like doing everything for him at this point. And then later on, he says, take a black, a plain black marker and write this on your chest. So it's like uh, he, it, it, it's, he's not just waiting on other people to do everything for him anymore. He's kind of taken his own life by by the, the horns, so to speak. And that's like, you know, the like the essential uh, you know, liberating yourself from, um, you know, you, you stop building your life on a foundation of quicksand and like start like uh, leading your own fucking life. Yeah. So like a lot of love songs fucking I don't know. So, so when I think of like w- what a band might do to become su- commercially successful, people fucking love love songs. So like um, I think that tendency to like uh uh, saturated with uh, references to women and longing. I think that there's a financial reason that, that people do that. So when I heard lines like that, to me, it, this was coming straight from his heart or whatever. Uh, now I'm going to, you know, what I'm going to say is that song Mittens, I was going to quote it er- earlier in this week because it, it, it spoke to me because I hate Mittens. I don't like... Um, you know, to to me, that's like uh, you can't move correctly. You you're just being strangled by someone else, and you can't move. But then, like the more I heard that song, the more those lyrics bothered me, and then the more <laughs> it happens to me sometimes where I love something at first listen and then start to hate it. And I, I, I that's my relationship with that song right now. But yeah, I fucking love the next storm. I think the song's fucking beautiful. So it's it's in triplets. So that's where the um swing feel comes from so like uh yeah so there is a there is a three feeling to it even though it's four demons uh i fucking love demons demons is the song that uh, i listened to uh 40 times this week i i got literal chills from that song uh so many times fucking love that song that song alone uh frank turner is fucking god tier to me I fucking love that song so much. Love 40 Downs, more or less the same thing. I fucking love uh, the piano parts to it. There's so much, I don't know, there's, there's something about the dynamic and the instrumentation and the this, I don't know, I fucking love this album. Maybe only a couple songs on it, but there's, there's times that, uh, I don't know, beauty, 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 beauty. And uh, I guess that's it. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah, Love 40 Down, uh, fucking amazing song. I want to see it live. If I ever see Frank Turner live, which I probably won't, but if I did, I'd want him to play that. The sing- his singing at the end of that song is awesome. Okay, Josephine. I want to talk about this song because it has the most fucked up line uh, I think we've seen so far. Uh, it's a great song. There's parts that are on, uh, a bit on the cheesy side for me, uh, but there's this lyric that again made me think of Jomo. He says, come on now, Josephine, let's pretend it's Halloween. You come as a car crash, I'll go as James Dean. Bruh, and I was like, wow, that's some bruh. <laughs> it's a pretty fucked up shit. Yeah. Uh, and then Silent Key, the there a, a lady sings on that song. Her name is Sme Patterson. I tried to find out exactly how she pronounced her name. I looked through like 17 interviews. Not one person said her fucking name in the beginning of the interview, and then the very last one did. I believe it's Sme Patterson. Uh, her singing is fucking great. The song has like this slower burn to it, and the end has this great buildup. Uh, anyway, her voice is beautiful, and uh, I like to hear her on some other stuff. Oh, uh, let's read some YouTube comments and then we will get the fuck out of here first. I came for punk, stayed for Frank, kept coming back for Frank. Next, great song for inspiration to people who need it. Next person says, you can always rely on this absolute legend to pick you up when you're down. Uh, Can't wait for the new album. And lastly, Frank never lets me down. 2018, uh, they put out a record called Be More Kind. 2019, No Man's Land, which is bombed. It's like his lowest rated fucking album ever. Uh, People hate it. And then in 2022, FTHC, which stands for Frank Turner Hardcore, which is the logo he's had for 
you can see it on England Keep My Bones there. He's had it for quite a while uh, in 2022. So if you want uh, some other stuff, there's those three new ones. There's the first one, which I can't remember what it was called, but the one from 2007. Yeah, I don't know. With the exception of positive songs for negative people, which apparently most of the world dislikes, which is my favorite one. Uh, if that one set aside, because I will listen to that whole thing all the way through. If I were to ever listen to Frank Turner, I would never buy any one specific album. I would have to have some mix of songs going on of the best ones from the previous four or five albums because there's just too much where I just don't give a shit. I listen to it. I feel nothing. And w when we talked about mittens, right, I don't want to harp on it too much because I, I, I fucking hate it. But it's just some songs are just trying to be too profound when they're not. Not every song has to be like a fucking seven layer cake or whatever. Uh, so I, I don't know. It's like there's too many songs that I hear it and it's like, okay, I get there's a bunch going on here and this is supposed to be this song that moves me and makes me feel something, but it doesn't. So I don't give a shit. And I don't want to hear it. I like Frank Turner. I'm not in love with them, but it's the positive songs is a fucking banger of an album. It's great. It's my favorite. And it was the highlight of the week. Would anyone else like to say anything else about Frank Turner before we move up, before we leave? Don't waste your time. <laughs> Joking. That's a joke. Adam. That's a joke. That's a joke. Kind of. Shuma. Kind of. I uh, love him. Love him. Love him. Love him. Okay. Jeff, wrap this episode up. Say something. Just like Frank Turner and his love for bodies of water, I can't wait to go out and swim in my pool because it's really, really hot in my house right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this was awesome. Going to swim uh, naked or what? I mean, do you want to come over? Show that hot. <laughs> See that hot penis. <laughs> <Venus. laughs> Yo, it is literally like pitch black in this band room because I thought I thought it would be cooler than the rest of the house, and I'm fucking wrong. So I was I, I literally read my notes by my cell phone light. <laughs> Next week I'll be back. We'll take care. They're, of they're coming to add, they're coming to add free on fucking tomorrow. I guess I don't know. My buddy told me yesterday wow. that the most freeing he's ever felt was when he was walking around his house butt naked, ripping a bong on the couch. Nice. Has anyone ever felt that? Um, he says it's fucking freeing. No, I have not. Are we done recording now? All right, all right, uh, yeah, bye. What's the hardest part of a vegetable to eat? What? The wheelchair.